This tutorial is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions. Get the Free Switch Advantage. Welcome back to Free Switch with Fred. My name is Fred Butessa, and this time we are still continuing with videos that are going to give us knowledge about Free Switch. If you've been following my videos from the very beginning, I'm assuming that you've actually acquired enough knowledge to take you deeper and deeper into Free Switch. Now that we know what free switch is, we want to see how we are going to implement free switch as a private branch exchange or the commonly known as a PBX. Of course, free switch has the power to implement the PBX functionalities. It supports many features that are typically associated with the telephone system. In the following videos, I'll be looking at features like voicemail, faxing, call recording, IVR menus and more. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you're going to be able to create users. Assuming you have a company and you are the free switch administrator, there is a possibility or it is possible for you to create a range of users at once and they will have commonly the same features and you can do this within seconds. The users are saved in the directory folder and you can go there and look at those XML files that are named after the extension number itself. But when you check under scripts in the source code, you can see a script called add user, which you can use to either create one user or to create a range of users. In this scenario, I'll create a user 1021 or 1021. And let's actually check there to see if this user has been created. So we can actually see that this script has gone in and created a new XML file, named it 1021, and it has put all the default parameters for an extension. Of course, one more thing we need to do is that we need to change the dial plan or modify it so that it can actually allow other users to call the newly created extension. The default dial plan only supports 1000 to 1019, so we need to cover the 1021 extension. So you modify and add um, a two. So I would love to account for the digit two. And then after doing that, you reload. After reloading, we're gonna have to make a test call. Let's actually try to register that extension. So I'll add a new extension or under preferences and then I'll create a new extension. After you've added this new user, you have to Make sure that you can register. Let's see if we've registered. You go to the free switch console and then you show registrations. Of course, we see our user 1021. It has registered. We need to change the default passwords and then from one, two, three, four to something else that you prefer. Once we do that, we make a test call. Note, if you don't change the default password, the calls between the calls that you make will delay by 10 seconds. That is a setting that was designed in FreeSwitch by default or out of the box. So you have to change the default password to something else that you can disable that. Let us try to create a range of users, 1022 to 1029. So the way you do this is that you, you put minus minus users and then equals, then you define the range of extensions that you want to create. Of course, you start with the starting one to 1029 and that will be it. Of course, it's keeping 1021 and 1022 because they already exist. Then it will create the list, the rest of the extensions. That is very important because if you already have an existing extension and it has different parameters or custom parameters, it won't overwrite that. So you can see that the extensions have been created and they are listed under our directory folder. Thank you for watching. 
See you in the next video. If you want to advance your knowledge in free switch, check out our website for the best training offers or you can meet us at the Glucon Conference in Illinois, Chicago.